Hello, everybody. It's me, Ross, and what a mental 24 hours it's been since Paul Lambert was sacked as town manager. In today's video, I'm joined by Harvey, Seggs, Bloomers, Tim and Darren as we take a look at Paul Lambert's tenure at Portman Road from the row beginning to the very end. Joined by Harvey first to take a look at when he was appointed manager back in October 2018 when Paul Hurst was sacked as the new era hadn't began well at all. We're bottom of the championship. Harvey, what was your reaction when Lambert was appointed back then? Surprise was my was my initial reaction to be honest with you. I certainly wasn't surprised that Hurst got sacked. Um, you know, we signed a lot of players that summer. Evans arguably invested the the most he'd had in in a good few years. Um, and yeah, that new era came to an abrupt end after fourteen games. So um, I wasn't surprised that Hurst got sacked. Um, it was released pretty quickly that Lambert was set to take over. Um, I remember Stu confirming it on. I think it was the Mirror who reported it at the time. So, um, yeah, I was I was surprised. The whole Norwich connection thing made a lot of town fans feel uncomfortable, and I certainly certainly understand that. But I think a lot of fans were were you know happy to support him and happy to give him the time that ultimately he had. Um, you know, he was he made reference to watching the the Middlesbrough game I think on TV where it was like being in a library and. There was no atmosphere, so he tried to re-engage fans. You know, a lot of us bought into the whole PR Paul thing, um, you know, buying fans beers and what have you, um, bringing legends back into the club. And, you know, it, it worked for, for a lot of it. There was, there was a lot of fans who, who f- fell back in love with their club again after the, after the demise of the, the kind of end of the Mick era. So I think he did initially a lot of good work behind the scenes. Um, and we were... Surprisingly pleased with it with the first few months. Unfortunately, um, managers are, are judged by results on the pitch, not by what's done behind the scenes. Um, and from there, it kind of fell apart, really, didn't it? After the the relegation and, and what have you. So, Segs, thanks very much for joining me. Um, Harvey just covered the appointment of Paul Lambert. Now let's get into PR Paul. Um, I'm sure a lot of us. Pretty much he won us over with all the stuff he did with the legends coming in. Uh, what's your take on that moment when PR Paul became a thing? Um, quite a while ago now, isn't it, really, when you think about what's happened since. Um, yeah, PR Paul obviously came in. He looked to change the club around. Um, you know, he spoke to legends, as you said. He um, bought everyone a beer. He paid for a way. I can't, Blackburn game, wasn't it? He paid for coach travel and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. Um, to be fair, it was refreshing at the time. Um, I bought into it. It was nice to see a manager kind of actually caring about the, man- uh, the fans and, you know, actually giving a damn about what we thought. I mean, um, you know, I, as people know, I've, I am a bit hypocritical when it comes to Mick, but I will slate him now because at the end of the time, he did criticise us all and we did fall out of love with him. And, which, and you know, it was just one of those things, but it was his time to go. But Paul came in and kind of gave us what we wanted to hear. We heard it all, you know, it was... Unfortunately, a relegation wasn't exactly on the cards when he came in, but we were looking we were looking so bleak at the time. I mean, Hurst had sold our best players, you know, got rid of Waghorn, he'd got rid of McGoldrick, he'd got rid of Garner, and obviously Bart was not playing at his best. So Paul came in, just gave us a refreshing look on look at things, and all of a sudden, um, you know, he's buying us drinks and it was just it was just nice to see to actually have a manager who actually seemed to care care about us and it was something to buy into I mean if we we're, if were going down or not it didn't really matter at the time because he just felt like he he knew what he was doing and um, he was just getting us ready for League One and us to back him um, and to have his support which we did and it, you know it was, I remember the Rambo and stuff like that you know it, it was just a it was just a good thing to happen um, obviously in hindsight I won't go into it too much but in hindsight it was just PR for being a big fraud, um, as I've said on many occasions, and it was just a big, massive, massive kind of, um, I forget the word I used at the time now, but it was just a massive um, ploy just to get us inside, just to cover up the fact that he was useless. <laughs> but yeah, obviously, you know, it's, if, it wasn't for, if it wasn't for that, I think it would have made relegation tougher. Well, Darren, thank you very much for joining me. We just covered PR Paul and him being appointed back in October 2018. And he wasn't the man to save us from relegation to the third tier of English football for the first time since the 50s. 
Bottom of the championship, it wasn't good, was it? Um, what's your memories and reaction when we got relegated? Yeah, well, the, um, again, it was a, one of those sort of, we were in a bit of a bubble, I think, at those point. At that point. I think what's been covered, obviously, is him bringing all the fans back to the ground. Me and my son went to, I mean, we we're up in, in the northwest, so we, we don't go to the home games, but we go to all the away games, mainly that are north of Birmingham. So we went to all the all the away games. I I was there on a very wet, cold night at Stoke, um, the proverbial, you know, where we got handsomely beaten two 0 But the atmosphere in the away end was just amazing. You know, we did not stop singing the whole game. Even the Stoke fans were couldn't quite believe <laughs> that <laughs> we were all applauding the players off the pitch. You know, and that just, you know, that just continues. Um, actually, the last game of the season, I was I was in a hospitality at Ipswich um, where we beat Leeds. And uh, again, you know, great atmosphere, mainly made by the Leeds fans. They were pretty exceptional. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just a, a season of, of disappointment. But um, I think, say, Lambert got a bit of a free ride with, we were all kind of back in the club. There was lots of people saying it would be good for us to get relegated. You know, we'll be able to rebuild in League One and come back stronger. Um, so there was a lot of people, I think, pinning that that kind of uh, examples of the of the Leicester's, Sheffield United. Um, I don't know who else had, had has gone New York, Norwich even. You know, who yeah have gone from League One and then bounce and bounce and bounce. So. Obviously, it was never a good idea to be relegated. That's never a positive thing. Um, and then, obviously, uh, but we then looked forward to this kind of uh, what was it? A tour, a, a tour of League One as we went into the summer. So, um, yeah, I mean, on on the pitch, uh, hand on heart, I was quite happy for him to leave at the end of that relegation season. After you know, to thank him for bringing some positivity back getting the fans back in the club, but clearly on the pitch, whether he had the players or not, but he, he just didn't find a way of getting a result. We weren't hard to beat. We didn't score goals. There was really not much positive. You know, the only positives being uh, like Downs, Dazell and Lancaster all got some time on the pitch, all got a bit of experience. Um, so, yeah, then we, then we face a season you know, back in, in League One. So welcome back, Harvey. The next section is HMS Pistol League. What a great start to League One tour back in the 2019-20 season. Uh, fantastic start. James Norwood, Luke Garbett signed. Um, your memories from that start to the season. Um, of course, it didn't end well, did it? It didn't. No, I, like a lot of fans, I was, I was excited. I was, you know, looking at that squad um, after relegation. You're looking at people like Judge, Bishop, uh, Emma Hughes, even at, at that time, that really could could rip up that league. Uh, the signing of James Norwood, as you've mentioned, which was a, a huge signing at the time. I think there were a few championship clubs in for him as well. Um, we, we were really excited. Um, that first game of the season against Burton, where I think Garbutt scored the winner, didn't he, in a 1 0 win? 4 um, 4 2. It was very kind of back to basics, but I thought it worked well. Um, you know, Norwood and Jackson formed that good partnership that season where Jackson's got 11 goals, seven assists. Um, and we were developing good good relationships all over the pitch. Um, we had that clean sheet record as well, didn't we, where we didn't concede in, in seven or eight games. So it worked really well. Um, ultimately, it fell apart as, as it has done this season. Um, personally, I, I think COVID saved Lambert's job. Um, I think if if he wouldn't have, um, you know, if he wouldn't have had that interruption, uh, the season halted. I think he would have left at the beginning of the, uh, sorry, at the end of last season. So it was it's it started very well, but as I said, it, the same thing happened this season. We started okay. We began to get a little bit of confidence that actually we we might you know finally be able to get out of the league, um, and it's uh, it's gone the you know the complete opposite direction. So. Disappointed, um, but maybe we should have seen it coming after the uh, the shambolic season that we had last season in the end. 
Well, Bloomers, thank you very much for joining me. We've just covered HMS Piss the League and the great start to the League One campaign. Then the poor run of form came in and then the unbelievable five-year deal was given to Paul Lambert. Um, your reaction when Paul was appointed New Year's Day, Wickham Wanderers versus Town, live on Sky, and that news broke. Unbelievable. It certainly seemed a weird one at the time, didn't it? Everyone questioned it, and as has happened so many times over the last few years, when things could have gone one way or the other, it's gone the bad way. Um, yeah, going up to that announcement, you well, if, if you went to the games... It's weird. We didn't look like a team that was capable of getting promotion, even at that time. Before then, we were getting all these wins. But other than maybe the Tranmere 4-1, um, which sticks out in my memory, I can't think of a game where I, I sat there and thought, yeah, we played really well. We've dominated the team. We've won comfortably. There might have been a couple more that I've missed. But when that Accrington game live on Sky uh, came and went, where we lost and it was a bad performance, and it was our first defeat of the season, from that moment on, it kind of looked just, I don't know, ominous, I think is the word. Because, again, get halves and games would go by without a, what I would deem a good performance. And it just carried on like that, which is what made the, the timing of the announcement all the more bizarre. Um, I was sitting there New Year's Day with two friends in a weird pub near the ground. That, there's not much near Adams Park, but we found that pub. Um and yeah, the news the news broke and we were just kind of looked at each other like, is this is this a wind up? Like and then we kind of just laughed at the sort of ballsiness of, of Evans because he he this is gonna be the decision that he's remembered for. Um and yeah, like I say, it could have gone one or two ways, and because it's Ipswich Town, uh it, it went the bad way. If we'd have gone up that season, would everything have been different? Yeah, quite possibly, but it just goes to show how Evans has managed to continually back the wrong horse on almost every occasion is un unnerving. And, and yeah, it, it kind of just sowed the seeds of Lambert's downfall all the quicker, not just because of the fact that we went on an even worse run afterwards. It's that if we had gone on a worse run afterwards and the bad feeling still would have been there, but just the fact that we knew that there would be five years to go, four years to go, and Lambert, you know, would be pretty much secure right up until when the news broke of everything that happened. It's kind of what stuck in the craw, really. And and to be honest, it, it kind of, yeah, just was the start of it, of his downfall. Um, it's just a shocking decision that hopefully we're not going to feel the repercussions of too much in the future, but we'll just have to wait and see. So, Darren, you're back, and we're going to talk about the good start to this season, the 2020-21 season, a very strange season in terms of behind closed doors. COVID is still hitting the world, and um, it's another good start. Yeah, another good start. Um, quite clearly, I think, you know, the ill feeling towards Lambert had built the previous season. COVID, without a doubt, saved his life, but he saved his Scratch that. It didn't save his life. Saved his job. Um, and yeah, we start we start the season again. Um, lots of kind of positive talking about understand you know sticking to his philosophy uh, and not making all the changes to the, the tactics and things which all of us criticised him for the season before. So okay, and then but the philosophy was this you know for. I always refer to it as a four-five-one. I know on paper it's four-four-three, but we didn't have the three up front to make that system work. Like Liverpool and Man City, who've got people buzzing around inside the box. You know, our our wide players don't do that. And then so we were left with this pass-pass. You know, I've never seen Ipswich play like that. You know, it's never I've never been comfortable or used to seeing Ipswich passing the ball around the back four dominating possession, you know, in the 40 odd years I've supported Ipswich, I don't think we've ever dominated possession ever, you know, I'm, I, and, and that's weirdly, and I'm skipping ahead, but that's weirdly why the last few games I've been really comfortable with how the match has gone, because that's how I'm used to seeing Ipswich play where we're dangerous on the attack, but the, t the other team's going to have most of the ball and we'll just sit there and be hard to beat and then try and attack. But, yeah, we start the season off um, 
if you look at the fixture list, we had a very, very kind start with the teams that we played. Um, and credit to the team, we took advantage of that. Um, so I think we won the first five games, I think, uh, is how it all went. But toward by game kind of three and four and five, we were starting to get these comments from Lambert about really, really good, you know, these quotes that he'll come out with and be forever remembered for Ipswich with, but the performances weren't good. You know, we we were probably good for five minutes and, and managed to score some goals or take advantage. I think a way to, was it Bristol Rovers? They got a man sent off when we were losing that and somehow we, we win it, um, and we sh- which we shouldn't have done. And I think if he'd, have, if he'd have come out at that point and just said, we were lucky today, we didn't really deserve it, that would have totally changed how the season unfolded. But because he was, either he was trying to convince Evans of like, this is all great, look at me, I'm brilliant, but he certainly wasn't convincing the fans. You know, we all know hundreds of thousands of Ipswich fans, if, we, if we've got that many, but certainly tens, um, you know, they know what's a good performance and what isn't. And it wasn't good. And this possession, 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 ineffective play around the back wasn't really that interesting to, to watch. And then, you know, obviously teams sussed us out. And after those first five games, we go back into an exact replica of the season before with, um, uh, you know, not getting results firstly, um, and then a bit of tinkering. Um, I think what, what should be said and to be fair to Lambert, we had a lot of injuries. And if you have Kane Vincent Young playing right back, if you've got Flynn Downs in the middle, because obviously we had all of that transfer with him going to Crystal Palace, is he going? Did he hand in a transfer request? All of that, which I've forgotten about. Um, Norwood's out injured. Jackson was injured, I think, at the start of the season. So we had Drine and Fit. Um, Sears was out. Skews was out. You know, uh, Edwards, I think, was out. Well, no, he wasn't. Now, Edwards was on fire, wasn't he? But then got injured. Yeah, your boy. So to be fair, if we did have our squad fit, the way he wanted to play, might have worked where I think he definitely should be criticized for is we had no plan B and when we didn't have the players who could play how he wants to play with running into the box and all that he didn't he didn't change it you know and there was loads of times where we had more strikers on the bench than anybody else and still he only played one up front you know it should have been yeah, well, I'm a I'm a fan of four four two at the level that we're playing at. That's just be bet we've got better players in your position. That's that's have people in the box. That's create some space, create opportunities, and have people in dangerous positions. And um, clearly, the way he wanted to set up this season was was possession football, pass it all around. We're going to be Barcelona, and we're League One playing on bobbly pitches with no grass. You know, that's just be effective. So, yeah, a good a, a good start. But as soon, I think every town fan, certainly everyone in the media, as soon as the next five games came and results started going down, and he starts making up all this stuff about how well we're playing, that you know, that was it. You know, his this tiny little bit of patience that I think we reset at the start of the season. We see how everything unfolds that that was it his his final final chance had gone and you know he was only a matter of time really bloom is welcome back we just spoken about the press conference moments that paul lambert had done uh that then started the lambert out campaign protests the front page by the paper um your thoughts you did a very passionate speech on the podcast when that was happening um yeah it was always going to be happening when um the performances and lambert's just what he was saying was just mad. Well, this is the thing. You say um, it was always going to happen. Actually, as you well know, as as many people locally will know, Ipswich Town's fan base is one that's incredibly loyal and doesn't kick off very easily. So the fact that the protests got to the stage they did shows the, the level of feeling that we had about the club. And yeah, you're right. I, I did a very sort of, I, I wasn't, meant to either I did quite a passionate speech just because I ended up getting so riled by thinking about everything that had gone on 
And in that speech, I said, um, Lambert sort of mocking, the, maybe not mocking, but being unnecessarily abusive to the local media, missing press conferences, creating ill will towards fans, just the general malaise. I said at the time, there's only one club pretty much that he could get away with doing that and still remain in his job. Mm. And that's Ipswich Town. And I still believe that. I still believe that he knew how, I don't want to say soft the fan base we are. And I think I used that phrase at the time, but we are a plat compared to, you know, bigger teams or compared to teams like Leeds, where the fan base is very passionate of like Sunderland, as you've seen, like on the documentaries, we are quite a placid fan base. So for it to get to the level it did, just again, shows how fed up we were. It, it, it was unacceptable conduct. I know the man was ill at, at various stages. That doesn't excuse, that doesn't excuse almost all of his behavior in my mind it was just it was just unnecessary and and yeah we were the we fans were the ones that, that bore the brunt of it so yeah the the protests were in my mind justified towards the ownership and towards the manager did anything i see cross the line no in my mind um so yeah i, I i'm fully behind everything that went on and i don't think any of us kind of would see how quickly things seemed to turn and for uh, potential new ownership to come in and for a change of manager. But look, if the uh, protests happened, if the protests didn't happen, would we now have a change? of? I don't know. I don't know if it had played any part in it. I'd like to think that it did. Uh, and it also it shows, even though the club's in its worst stage in in 60 years or so, just how passionate and, and rather the fan base still is. And it, and it warms my heart to know that there's a lot of us that still care. Uh, and yeah, the newspapers, when they printed Lambert out, in my mind, it was, I'd have done it sooner. Uh, and actually, it's weird to look back on it and think that the papers printed it. And then I think what Lambert had like six or seven more games after that. So like, it wasn't even an immediate thing. Whereas that happens in, in Birmingham or that happens in Leeds or like, you know, dude, those managers are out, out, on, uh, out the door one game afterwards. So yeah, I'm glad I, I'm not glad that it happened because I want us to be the best that we can be. I want us to be back to even where we were five, six years ago. But it happened. The result that we wanted has happened in terms of a new, of a new manager. So we'll just have to see what goes from here. But I am glad on a footballing level that Paul Lambert isn't the manager anymore. And that's all there is to say. Finally, Segs, on the tenure of Paul Lambert from the very beginning to the very end, as ended now. It wasn't a drill. He has been sacked as town manager. What was your first reaction when you read that tweet, him being sacked as manager late on Sunday evening? It's funny because we're, we're actually we're just sitting here watching telly. Um, my iPod is on. It kind of keeps bleeping and stuff. And I thought, what the hell is going on? I haven't tweeted anything like major. I haven't actually... Like why are people messaging me and stuff? And I'm getting all these notifications. And then I think mean, it's like 20 minutes after the actual second was announced. So I, I went on Twitter and actually saw, whoa, I've just missed this big news. Um, it was quite crazy, really. Um, yeah, I've been thinking about it all day. I'm just, I, I can't quite put into words how happy I am. Um, I mean, I've been, <laughs> I've been calling for him to be gone for ages. Um, and obviously it worked out, like I said earlier, you know, big fraud kind of worked out i think it's like december 2019 I, the foundations were finally laid for me to actually think he's he's not actually the man i'll back him if i need to and it was quite hard at the start of this season to actually get behind him again after what happened last season they finished in 11th i think obviously covid saved him his job and stuff like that but um yeah in terms of the actual second i'm so happy i feel like it's a, it's a fresh start now and we've got these rumors of takeover whether it's going to happen or not which it's weird how obviously the club can't say that's going to happen because it's, you know, it's professional and stuff like that. But if that happens as well, it's just going to be a, a massive, massive week or month for the club. I mean, we've got rid of Lambert now. Um, whether we get Paul Cook or not in, it remains to be seen. But but yeah, um, I'm say it's very, very happy. I'm glad it's over. It's been a horrible, horrible two and a half years. We've had some good moments. I mean, beginning of League One, we weren't undefeated. We had trips away to Gillingham and Fleetwood. Obviously, yeah, self in there as well. Um, Peterborough, Shane was late, 95th equaliser and stuff like that. So we, we have had some good moments. And obviously, this year hasn't been quite the same because we've been watching it on telly. And and so there's that bit. But the, the only bit that gets me really is, yes, it's good for mental health, I think, because we are in a bit of a 
horrible, horrible time of COVID and that and lockdown. But at the same time, it's, it is going to bug me that I can't be at the next game or at his, because we're at home Saturday as well. So I wasn't at his last game and I can't be at the new manager's new game, the uh, first game, sorry. That's the only, it's the only downside for me is the fact he's been sacked in COVID, during COVID, so we can't actually experience it properly how we would love to. I'm sure we'd all love to be at the new manager's um, first game in charge, whether it's Paul Cook or not, you know, um, it would be a, absolutely unreal, I think, especially after the horrid, horrid time we've had. But yeah, um, I say two and a half years, it's been a horrible time. We've finally, finally got that weight off our shoulders now. It, just, it definitely feels like the weight's been lifted today or last night, you know, as he, he's gone. Funny enough, I'm still waiting for my Lambert out um, away day beers. Um, so they're going to come today or tomorrow. And I was like, well, what am I going to do with these now? It'll just be a keepsake now, I guess. I can't, I'm not going to push for them out anymore. But yeah, um, very happy. See what the future, see where the future goes now. Um, hopefully it's for the better. It's definitely looking like, looking like it. Um, they obviously weren't playing for him Saturday. They're obviously playing for someone else, whether it was Gil or the new manager, new owner, whoever. And it's promising. We've, we've beat two top six or two top eight sides now. All of a sudden, we can push on and get those automatics. Um, I'm beginning to believe it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not not 100 saying it, but I I definitely feel like we we could definitely push for a top six finish now. Oh, well. <laughs> You well, thank you very much for Segs, and thanks to everybody else who got involved in the video. Lambert's tenure is now over. There we go. I've been Ross. Thank you for watching.